When someone says that aliens will invade the Earth, a lot of people think that the aliens will come in large ships, blasting everything they see. This movie adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's story, Color Out of Space, will show you another possible way of how the aliens could invade the Earth. Welcome back, guys. It's Motion Recaps again. Today we're covering the 2019 sci-fi horror movie, Color Out of Space. It's H.P. Lovecraft and Nick Cage, so it's gonna be weird. Spoilers ahead. In the wake of his wife Teresa's mastectomy, Nathan Gardner moves his family, including his children Lavinia, Benny, and Jack, to his late father's farm. One night, a brilliantly glowing meteor crash lands in their front yard. The next morning, hydrologist Ward Phillips, who's surveying the area for a dam development, shows up to see the meteor, along with the mayor and the sheriff of the nearby town. However, the meteor vanishes the next day, and a chain of strange events begins to occur. The family soon finds themselves in an incomprehensible situation, as a color from the meteor begins affecting every living cell. Now before I continue the breakdown, please take a moment right now and subscribe to this channel, like this video, and hit that bell icon to be notified of when we have another movie recap ready for you to enjoy. But for now, let's go ahead and enjoy this one, Color Out of Space. The movie begins with a girl named Lavinia, as she holds a ritual with the hope that it'll help her mother's battle with cancer. Suddenly, a guy named Ward sneaks up on her, and Lavinia is cautious at first, but soon she becomes friendly when she finds out that the guy doesn't have any ill intentions. He's a hydrologist who's surveying the area for a dam development. He tells Lavinia that he lost his way in the woods and she explains to him how to get back to town. Lavinia gets on her horse named Comet and she rides back home. Her father Nathan and mother Teresa are waiting for her angrily because she's late for dinner. Lavinia goes to a barn and leaves Comet and there she finds her brother Benny blazing like crazy. A family dog, Sam, is with him. Everyone's getting ready for dinner and because Teresa has to work, Nathan is a chef. Then we meet the youngest son, Jack. After dinner, Nathan and Teresa talk about how happy their life is on this farm. Nathan then becomes a little horny, and we find out that they haven't had sex for six months because of Teresa's mastectomy. They decide to change that. Everyone goes into their rooms, and everyone's doing different things. Lavinia is sleeping with her witchy objects all across the bed. Benny is chilling with Sam and playing games on his PC. Nathan and Teresa are making out, and they're feeling younger than ever. At the same time, Jack is laying on his bed, and we can see that he's really scared. Suddenly, everything starts shaking, and Jack gets out of his bed. He finds Sam outside of his room, and the dog is acting really strange. The lights start flickering, and then a bright light shines, and a meteor crash lands in the family's front yard. Nathan and Teresa find Jack traumatized in front of his room, and everyone goes to check what happened. They find a meteorite, and Nathan is really disturbed by its smell. The family gets back to the house, and Teresa is upset because of Jack. The next day... The mayor arrives with the sheriff to check out what happened. Nathan explains to them everything. Ward then shows up, and Lavinia is really happy that she sees him. They flirt a little, and Ward goes to check the meteorite. The sheriff and the mayor leave, and Nathan tells Lavinia to go check on her mother. The three guys then check out the meteor better, and then Ward gets a special lesson from Nathan on how to milk alpacas. Teresa tells Lavinia that she saw her flirting with Ward. However, Lavinia denies that. Her mother then comments that she's dressed provocatively, and that gets Lavinia mad. She runs back to her room. After some small talk, Ward asks Nathan if there's someone else living on the property, and Nathan tells him that there's a squatter named Ezra. Benny takes Ward to him. On their way, Benny tells Ward that Ezra is really into conspiracy theories, and as they get closer to his house, Ward sees a bunch of surveillance equipment. Ward soon meets Ezra, who already knows who Ward is and why he's there. They talk about the water, and Ward soon finds out that the water has a really muddy color and he tells Benny and Ezra to try their best to avoid drinking the groundwater. Suddenly, everyone notices the storm approaching. Lavinia and Nathan are observing the meteorite, and they're blown away when they witness the meteorite getting struck by numerous bolts of lightning. Ward notices that the groundwater has taken on an oily sheen and tests it. Then his test strips begin to glow brightly with the color. Soon, he starts hearing buzzing in his phone and radio, and then something moving in the bushes. He checks it out with his lamp, only to see traces of the color in the air. The next day, a news crew arrives to interview Nathan about the meteor, but finds that it has vanished. Later that day, the family watches Nathan's interview on TV, while Teresa is slicing some carrots for dinner. Nathan is so disappointed in his interview that he sends Jack to get Teresa to see that. Jack goes to his mother. Teresa cuts her fingers really badly, and Nathan immediately takes her to the hospital. The kids are alone the next day. Benny takes care of the alpacas while Lavinia is drinking coffee. She notices Jack whistling while his eyes are glued to the well. When she asks him what he's doing, he tells her to be quiet because the man from the well is talking to him. 
Lavinia starts feeling sick, and she goes into the house. She gets a phone call from Nathan, but she can't understand a thing because there's some kind of interference. Jack gets closer to the well, and he sees a strange plant inside of it. Suddenly, an insect comes out of it. It looks at Jack, and then it flies away. Lavinia tries to clean the mess from last night's incident. Then we can see the color in the water. Lavinia gets another call from Nathan, but she can't understand anything he's saying. She goes into the bathroom to throw up, and then she gets a visit from Ward, who warns her not to drink the groundwater. Ward then goes to visit Ezra to tell him the same thing. He finds Ezra listening to something. Ezra gives headphones to Ward, saying that he hears the aliens chatting underground. However, Ward tells him that it's probably some geothermal activity. He reminds Ezra not to drink the groundwater, and then he leaves. Nathan and Teresa are on their way back from the hospital when they almost hit a mutated cat with their car. Back at the farm, Jack is mesmerized by the color. Lavinia finds out that there's also interference with Benny's PC, and then he shows up, saying that time has passed instantaneously for him. Nathan and Teresa arrive at home, and Nathan lashes out at Benny and Lavinia with uncharacteristic rage because of the alpacas and Jack. Lavinia tries to tell him that something is wrong, but he doesn't listen to her at all. He takes the alpacas to the barn, and then he goes to take a shower. Nathan then notices that he has a small rash on his hands. Then he sees something slimy in the shower, and when he picks it up, it turns out that it's alive. The next day, Nathan notices that the tomatoes and peaches came in early this year, and they're also really big. After he harvests the fruit, he immediately washes them, but when he tries them, he finds out that they're inedible. He then goes into a fit of rage. Teresa snaps after losing a work client because of the poor internet connection. She goes downstairs to tell Nathan, but he's in a really bad mood, and the two of them have a fight. Nathan then pours himself some whiskey to calm down, and then we get to see how serious his rash is. That night, Lavinia tries to perform a ritual using the Necronomicon and offering her blood to save her family, mutilating herself in the process. Jack wakes up, and he goes outside where he finds Benny looking at the yard, which now looks really different. Teresa wakes up, and when she sees that Jack is not in his bed, she goes outside. Then she sees her two sons heading into the barn. Benny and Jack find mutated alpacas, and the color attacks them. Teresa hears their screams, and she rushes to their aid. But in the process, a bolt of color fuses Teresa and Jack into a deranged mass. The following day, Nathan tries to start his car, but after he fails, rage consumes him. After that, he sees what the color did to his farm. The family no longer has a way out, and they can't call out for help, as all the electronic devices have ceased functioning. Lavinia notices that the sunlight is harmful to Teresa and Jack, so they carry them to the attic. Benny then reveals that he had witnessed the alpacas after a horrible mutation due to the color. Nathan then takes his rifle, and he decides to end the miseries of the alpacas. He's horrified when he sees that the alpacas merged into one big fleshy mass. Nathan kills them, and then he gets back to the attic to do the same with Jack and Teresa. However, he has a change of heart, and he decides to spare them. He kisses Teresa, and then leaves. At the same time, Ward finishes talking with the mayor about the dam. He gets outside, and the sheriff calls him to show him something. A resident discovered a body of a fused mass of animals near Nathan's farm, Ward immediately heads there together with the sheriff. Lavinia and Benny conspire to leave the farm on Comet, but it seems that the poor horse is affected by the color as well, and it runs away. Benny then tells Lavinia that he hears Sam in the well, and when he goes to check it out, he tells Lavinia that he saw something moving down there. Lavinia tries to stop him from descending into the well, but Benny doesn't listen to her, and then he gets assimilated by the color. Nathan shows up, and he grabs Lavinia. He shows more of his uncharacteristic rage, and he tells her to go feed her mother and brother. Lavinia begs him to let her go, but he doesn't pay attention to that, and he locks her in the attic anyway. Ward and the sheriff show up, and Nathan lets them in. Ward sees Nathan's rash, and then he figures out that Nathan lost his mind completely because he's acting like the whole family is sitting in the living room. Ward and the sheriff hears Lavinia's screams, and they break into the attic, only to see that the monster is trying to eat Lavinia. Fear consumes Ward and the sheriff. However, Nathan shows up, and he kills the monster. Ward picks up Lavinia, and they leave the house. Suddenly, the color emerges from the well, and Nathan attempts to shoot the color, but the sheriff thinks that Nathan is aiming at Ward and fatally shoots him. Lavinia mourns, holding her father's dead body. Ward tells her that he'll be back, and he goes with the sheriff to Ezra's house. They arrive there to find Ezra's desiccated corpse and a recording he left behind, where he surmises that the color is attempting to remake Earth into a world it came from, into something it knows. The duo heads back to the farm, and on the way, a living tree snatches and kills the sheriff. Ward manages to get back to save Lavinia. He finds her standing in front of the well. She turns around and Ward sees that she's possessed by the color. The color shows him a vision of where it's coming from, a distant planet inhabited with tentacled alien entities. Lavinia then starts disintegrating, 
Ward enters the farmhouse and is pursued by a murderous apparition of Nathan. He manages to hide in the wine cellar as a colors distortion obliterates the farm and part of the woods. Ward, who is the only survivor, climbs out of the remains of the farmland, and he sees that the farm is now a colorless wasteland. A few years pass, and we see a traumatized Ward standing on top of the finished dam which covers the former farm. He narrates that the things that he saw on the farm can't be explained by science, and he adds that he'll never drink the dam's water. Just before the movie ends, we see the insect that came out of the plant from the well. And that's a recap of Color Out of Space, Nick Cage once again at his best. As always, share your thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe to this channel if you've not yet done so, and like this video if you enjoyed this recap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.